Hey YouTubers, Fabio back tonight. Uh, here, gonna I'm actually gonna start doing my uh, Bruce and Brandon Lee movies and you know assorted stuff like that. You know, I, I did mention uh, you know a while back in my last vlog, I think it was, what I was gonna do. Um, you know, I was gonna do Dolph Lundgren, which I finished up last night, and then I was gonna start with this uh, Bruce and Brandon Lee, and then uh, I did say, oh, excuse me, I'm already yawning, that I was gonna do. Uh, the seasons of Power Rangers, you know, uh, review season by season and stuff like that. So, you know, that's the plan right now. I know I keep repeating that, um, but just kind of letting you know what's going on. And like I said, you know, Bruce and Brandon Lee is my next project, and I do want to start with um, Bruce Lee's uh, introduction to American audiences. And... For those of you that are Bruce Lee fans like me, you, you already know what I'm talking about. Of course, I'm talking about the TV series, The Green Hornet. And this is a, a DVD. Uh, it's part of a set that, uh, well, I got part of the set and the rest of the part's coming. Hopefully soon. It's kind of ticking me off how long it's taken. But um, this is, you know, uh, uh, an import. It's, not a, it's like an official bootleg. But, you know, it's great quality. It's got all the episodes. It's got some pretty cool extra features on it as well. Of uh, the you know the the show, and like I said, it was Bruce Lee's introduction to American audiences because before this, Bruce Lee had been known, you know, in the martial arts community um, because of you know the way that he um, was practicing and teaching the martial arts. He was doing it in a, in a very unorthodox, uh, very uh, you know different way than you know very non traditionalist way than, you know, what people had seen before, and he was, you know, teaching, uh, he wasn't just teaching Asian people, he was teaching white people, he was teaching African American people, he was teaching anyone that wanted to learn, so he did cause a little bit of controversy, because, you know, he was exposing, you know, the martial arts to other people, you know, and at that time in, in the world, martial arts was not primarily taught to Americans, you know, it was primarily taught to Asian people in Chinatown and stuff like that, and the American people had not really um, got into it. You know, very a very small portion of America was into the martial arts, but you know that's that was that time. You know, but anyway, so what happened was well, I just actually I want to hold off on Bruce Lee until I get through this series. So I want to talk about the show first before I talk about Bruce Lee. So I apologize about that. But anyway. Uh, the Green Hornet is based on a radio serial and comic books, and it was a film serial before it had moved into this medium. And it focuses on uh, Britt Reed, who is the owner and publisher of the Daily Sentinel newspaper, which was given to him by his father. Um, and he is, at, at night, he becomes the Green Hornet, a mass crime fighter, along with his sidekick, uh, Cato, played by Bruce Lee. And the show basically just follows them around on their various adventures, you know. And there's only 26 episodes of the series. Um, it only ran for one season before it was canceled. Uh, I don't know the exact reason why it was canceled. Uh, I heard that a lot had to do with the budget. I heard that the series was very expensive pr to produce. And also the show was on at the same time as Batman. But this show was actually more popular than Batman when it was on. Um, because Batman's ratings were going down. And I guess the network had decided, and the company had decided, well, you know, we need to come up with a new show or something like that. So they created the Green Hornet. And the main difference between the Green Hornet and the Batman television show, tell, well, I can't talk. The main difference is that Green Hornet is played straight. You know how the Batman show is campy and cheesy and bang, boom, biff. Green Hornet's not like that. Green Hornet's serious. And that's probably why I like the Green Hornet a little bit better than Batman. I mean, I love the 60s TV show. I mean, I love Adam West and Burt Ward as Batman. You know, I love all the villains. You know, it was a great show. You know, you cannot deny that it was a great show. But Green Hornet I like a little bit better because it's serious. It, it's, it's like it's source material, you know what I mean? It's a straight adaptation of, well, not a straight adaptation. You know, they definitely, you know, uh, did some stuff in the show, you know, to make it, you know, more popular, I guess, and stuff like that. But anyway, so it's straight, you know, it's not... Bang, boom, biff, you know, it's, you know, serious, or like, like, good, like, straight criminals, like, they fight a lot of gangsters, and, you know, corrupt businessmen, and stuff like that, and, and I'll talk about all that when I talk about, when I do some rundowns of, like, my favorite episodes, and stuff like that, you know, they fight, 
you know, serious criminals. You know, they don't fight, you know, the Joker and Mr. Freeze and stuff like that. So that's cool. You know, that's another aspect of the show that I, I enjoy. And, you know, about the cast, you got Van Williams as Britt Reed in the Green Hornet. Now, Van Williams, um, not a very recognizable actor. I mean, I don't, he hasn't really done anything besides this. This is probably the most recognizable thing that he has done. Um, I'm going to just take a peek here um, to what he has done. But, I mean, he's great as Britt Reed and the Green Hornet. I really do like his performance um, in the show. And you know he's a you know he's a playboy you know he's like he's like Batman he's like Bruce Wayne you know he's like this this billionaire guy um, who you know he he doesn't care that you know like Bruce Wayne he doesn't care that he's making money you know he doesn't care that he owns this uh, huge company you know he cares about um, you know saving the world, you know, he cares about being a hero, um, you know, that's what he likes, he, you know, he, he enjoys the fact that, you know, he fights crime and stuff like that, you know, he enjoys the fact that, you know, people think he's a bad guy, but he knows he's a good guy, and, you know, he knows there are people out there who think, he, or know, who know he's a good guy, so it doesn't bother him that, you know, the media labels him as, you know, um, a villain, um, I'm looking at his profile here, I don't really see anything that, you know, to to anybody that would really be recognizable. Um, yeah, I don't really see anything. He's mainly done the television work, but, you know, he, it said he did retire in the, the early 80s. So that's cool, you know. But he's actually in, um, excuse me, the uh, Dragon, a Bruce Lee story. He has a small cameo as the film director in the Green Hornet scene of that. So that's pretty cool, you know, kind of paying tribute to that. And then we also have uh, Wendy Wagner as Lenore Case, who's Mr. Who's Britt's secretary, and she knows who the Green Hornet is. And then, um, like, they don't have, like, a relationship. I, th I thought that would have been cool if they had kind of, like, a relationship. But, like, they do kind of hint at it a little bit, but they don't really bring it into full focus in the show. So that's, you know, something that, uh, you know, I, I guess... Could have been cooler if they would have done that, you know, it would have been, um, more interesting, I guess, to the show. And I'm reading here, like, I, um, she was in Rosemary's Baby, but I've never seen that movie. And I'm actually reading kind of on a sad note here. She did pass away of cancer in 1997, so that is kind of sad to hear, but, um, you know... Like I said, like uh, Van Williams, nothing really recognizable. Then you have Lloyd Go as, or Go as Mike Axford. And Mike Axford's cool. I like the character. He's uh, one of the reporters, and he's always, you know, coming up with these schemes and stuff like that. And he's tr always trying to find out who the Green Hornet is. So that's kind of cool, um, you know, to, you know, that character. And, you know, he is kind of dumbfounded at times and stuff like that. But still a cool character nonetheless. You know, and I'm also reading here that, he also did pass away, so that is, uh, died of an aneurysm at 76. Uh, that's, that's also kind of a sad note. Um, uh, again, another actor that I don't really see anything that is, uh, well known. Well, it says he's a noted character actor, but I don't see anything that, that, uh, that I would know, to be honest with you. you know, that's, that's interesting. I guess I have to look more into it. And then Walter Brook plays uh, Frank Scanlon, the district attorney, and also the district attorney knows who uh, the Green Hornet really is. You know, he knows his secret identity and stuff like that. So that's cool. And they always meet in uh, like this in Britt's office. It's kind of cool the the sequence because he drives in like this this bill or he drives into this billboard. Well, no, no, I'm sorry. He yeah he goes into like this building. And it's a secret elevator behind Britt Reed's fireplace that comes down and they're hitting all these buttons and, you know, cool uh, 1960s sound effects and stuff like that. And sadly, he also uh, passed away. And he was in The Graduate, so that is kind of a, a big movie, a popular film. So, but, you know, mo most of the actors in this have passed away. I think Van Williams is the only, like, main character who's still alive because, you know, Bruce Lee passed away and stuff like that. So, you know, but... You know, that's kind of a sad note, you know, reading through this stuff, but hey, that's life, stuff happens. Um, but anyway, uh, 
in regards to like the the, the period, I really enjoy the, the another aspect of the show because of the time. Um, I I don't know why, but I'm I'm very uh, uh, I can't think of it. I'm very uh, into like the 1950s and the 1960s time period. Like if I if I could go back in time and live in a in a period of time. It would be that era, the 50s and 60s. Well, like the early 60s before the hippie movement and all that, you know. Um, but, you know, I like the cinema, like not the cinematography, the, the, the architecture, the way that things look, the cars, the, the costumes. I, I like all that in the show. So that's another reason why I like the show. You know, it's got cool, cool stuff in it. Um, now I want to talk about the Black, you know, yeah. Now I want to talk about the Black Beauty. I did intentionally leave Bruce Lee out because I want to talk about him at the end. Um. The Black Beauty is just a badass car, man. Another reason why the show is um, so popular because of this car. A lot of people who like the show like the car. And the Black Beauty is a 1966 Imperial Crown sedan. And it's just a really cool car. I, I mean, I would love to have one. But, like, you know, it's got all the cool gadgets. You know, the lights are green. Um, you know, it's got... Uh, you know, rocket launchers and stuff like that, and it's got a gas gun and an oil slick. You know, it's, it's like a James Bond car, you know. And I think when the show came on, especially to kids, I guess they thought that, you know, well, I know they thought that was, like, probably the coolest thing of the show was the car and Bruce Lee because this is the first time that we had seen martial arts on television, basically, you know, in a entertainment kind of format, you know. So people were really mesmerized by that, Um but also the car, you know, like I said, you got a rocket launcher and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool, you know. Black Beauty is definitely an awesome car. Um, now I want to talk about uh, a couple of, like, my favorite, or not a couple. I, I want to talk about my favorite episodes of the show. The first episode is called The Silent Gun. And it's a really cool episode. Um, basically what happens in this uh, episode, this uh, there's these murders going on. And the people are shot, but they don't they can't hear anything. The gun's silent. So now the Green Hornet and Kato, um, you know, find out, you know, what the gun is and, you know, who's got it and they got to get it off the streets, you know, before, you know, more people start dying. So that was kind of a cool episode. Uh, Give Them Enough Rope, the second episode was cool. It's about um, this insurance fraud thing that's going on and people are, the people close to it, like people investigating it, are dying and stuff like that and they're getting hurt. So Green Hornet and Kato... Um, you know, find out, you know, that, that the guy's not really, you know, hurt and stuff like that. And they find out it's a big scheme. So now they got to take him down. Uh, episode number three, Program for Death, was kind of cool. Uh, this guy uh, creates this, um, these diamonds. And they, you know, they're stealing these diamonds and stuff like that. And he's using these this transmitter. Um, he used this transmitter to kill one of the reporters who investigated it and now he's using the transmitter and the other cr in these crimes so now the green hornet's got to find out what's going on and actually episode three although it's the third episode it was actually the first one filmed because the masks look different in this episode they look like the uh the serial and stuff like that the original and the, the the comic book and stuff like that so this is you know before they adopted the the mask you could probably oh, i'm sorry Probably see them, yeah, pretty good on there. That's like the masks they were on the show. And this one, they're different. They're more like kind of rectangular and stuff like that. Um, Beautiful Dreamer, which is the first like two-part episode. That was a really interesting episode to me. Um, what happens is this guy owns this spa. And he, when they're in the spa, he manipulates them to commit murders and stuff like that. And Lenore actually goes to the spa and she's, you know, her job is to kill the Green Hornet. So now Hornet and Kato, you know, got to stop this guy and, like, destroy the spas and stuff like that, you know. So that's pretty pretty cool episode. Um, then we have episode 10, The Praying Mantis. And this is the point in the show where the focus becomes Kato and Bruce Lee. Because the first nine episodes, well, I'll talk about that later. Um, what happens is there's this um, uh Chinese criminal Lao Sing who's played by Mako and he's taken out all these other criminals and stuff like that so he can take you know over so when you know he's a martial arts master and stuff like that so when Kato knows this they have a final showdown and in my opinion this is the best scene in the whole show him or yeah Kato and Lao Sing fight and it's a, it's a very short fight 
but it's still awesome. That's my favorite moment of the show when him, when Kato and Lao Sing were fighting. That was great. Uh, another cool episode, episode number 13, The Secret of the Sally Bell. Uh, what happens is there's this cargo ship that has uh, $2 million in drugs. So uh, what happens is the guy that knows where it's at gets knocked out. So now you got um, the criminals and Green Hornet trying to fight over you know this guy to find out where the drugs are and stuff. And it's kind of cool the you know the way that the, the show or the episode carries out and stuff like that. I thought it was interesting. Um, another epi two part episode, Corpse of the Year. Um, what we have is this Green Hornet imposter is you know causing havoc and stuff like that and causing trouble so now uh green hornet has to find out who the guy is and why he's doing it and stuff like that so that was a cool episode you got like good green hornet and bad green hornet and then we got um bad bet on a 459 silent what happens is these two dirty cops are um using silent alarms to uh to make their own heist and stuff like that to steal from places so um you know and what happens is Green Hornet and Kato are out, and he get, Green Hornet gets shot. So now he has to cover that up as Britt Reed and, um, you know, get attention and stuff like that. So we got a really great scene feature in Bruce where he comes in to the Daily Sentinel as Kato and says, this is a message from the Green Hornet, and he shoots Britt Reed, but it's a blank to, you know, to make it, you know, to show that he's been shot so he could take care of the bullet hole. So that was kind of cool. That was an interesting moment in the series. Then we got the final two episodes, Invasion from Outer Space, and I don't know if this was actually supposed to be the last episode or not. I heard they were supposed to do like 10 more episodes, but they canceled it. But this is cool because you got this uh, former, like uh, he worked for NASA or something like that, I can't remember, and he actually has a nuclear warhead, and they're posing as aliens and stuff like that, so that was cool. So... The one alien like electroshocks Kato and he's like this and so, so it's kind of cool but they you know use this tracking signal and they find out you know where the aliens are and they get them so that was awesome I thought you know the for the, to end the show I thought that was a really good way to end the show those two you know final episodes and the way that it ends it doesn't end as it were to be the last episode so I don't think that it was intended to be the final episode it just happened to be because you know it got canceled and stuff like that but I would have loved to have seen more episodes. You know, I would love to have seen where the show would have went if it had continued. Um, especially for Bruce Lee. And now I want to talk about Bruce Lee. Um, you know, he's Kato. He's a badass. You know, he doesn't have to have any lines. And like I said, in the first nine episodes, he doesn't really do anything. He's just kind of there. And when a fight scene goes on, he fights people. So that's basically all Bruce Lee needed to do. But Van Williams, who played the Green Hornet, really pulled for Bruce. You know, he said, you know, this guy needs more screen time and more lines and stuff like that. So, like I said, starting with episode 10, The Praying Mantis, he got more lines and more screen time and stuff like that. So that's really where the show gets interesting because you have um, more Kato. And that's why the show was popular and that's why it's popular to this day. Because of Bruce Lee. A lot of people say, oh, the only reason why that show is known for what it is is because Bruce Lee is in it. Well, that's part of it, you know. I hate when people say that because you also have the Black Beauty. A lot of people like the show because of the car. And a lot of people like the show because they like the comic book and stuff like that. And, you know, now you have the movie just came out this year. So now, you know, there's going to be more interest generated into the television show because people are going to find out Bruce Lee is in it and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Um... But, you know, he's got these, you know, he's got his martial arts. He's got these little green darts that he throws at people, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, he's just an all-around badass, you know, Bruce Lee. You know, he is his servant. You know, he's like his manservant to, to Britt Reed. But it doesn't matter because we really know who, who kicks the most ass. And it's Bruce, <laughs> like in, in all his movies. And I'll talk about all that when I review them. Um, but, you know, Bruce is really great. And had the show continued, I think... Uh, maybe things would probably be a little bit different for Bruce in terms of his film career, you know, um, because if the show would have continued, it would have had more ratings and stuff like that. And, you know, I think he would have ended up doing, you know, Enter the Dragon if the show had continued and some of the other films that he was in. But it would have been interesting to see if the Green Hornet went on longer. You know, I think I would have really enjoyed to see that. But, you know, like I said, Bruce Lee at the time... 
was primarily known for just his his martial arts schools and stuff like that. You know, he was um, uh, becoming well respected because he was training, like I said, white people and African Americans and stuff. So you know, he auditioned for the show, and he was the only Chinese guy who auditioned who could say Brit Reed properly. So that's why they hired him. And um, you know, he he had a lot of control on the show because in the Praying Mantis episode where he fights Mako. Mako's double is Dan Inosanto, who was Bruce Lee's, one of his top students. So, you know, I guess he choreographed the fight scenes and stuff like that. You know, I haven't really seen anything in a documentary about that. I think it would be interesting as to do maybe like a little Green Hornet documentary, you know, about Bruce's time on the show and stuff like that. I, I would really have, uh, I would really like to see that. But I've, I've read interviews and stuff like that with Van Williams, and they said Bruce was great to work with. You know, he was always trying to better himself in terms of physical condition and, you know, what he could do on screen and stuff like that. So it's very interesting for a Bruce Lee fan, you know, like me, to hear that. You know, hear how Bruce really was behind the camera and stuff like that. I always like hearing that kind of thing. Um, you know, but like I said, you know, Bruce is great in the show. It was a great uh, stepping stone to his uh, future film career. Um, you know, it introduced him to American audience. It introduced basically the martial arts to American audiences and, you know, the entertainment uh, business, you know, pretty much. I mean, before this, you didn't really have any kind of martial arts television show or, or anything like that. Um, so that's really awesome. And uh, in conclusion, The Green Hornet is a great uh, cult TV show. You know, it is kind of a cult comic book. It's not um, main... It's not... Well, known as much in mainstream, like, as Batman or Superman or anything like that. So it is kind of a cult comic. Um, but it's a great show, you know. If you haven't seen it, I'm sure the episodes are here on YouTube. And you can find bootlegs anywhere. You can download them if you want. You know, definitely check the show out if you are, you know, a comic book fan and you're a Bruce Lee fan. I hope people go watch the show now because of the movie. You know, I think the movie was great coming out now because, you know, you have... You know, bootlegs and stuff like that. People can track the show down a little bit easier as opposed to maybe like 15, 20 years ago, you know. So that's great. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. If you have seen it, that's great. You know, I'm sure you enjoy it as much as I do. Uh, you know, I, I really do think it's a great television show. I wish it had lasted longer. I think that would have been awesome. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, stick around because next I'm going to review uh, Bruce's first martial arts film. And definitely one of my personal favorites of his, The Big Boss. So stick around for that. Peace.